Hello, so this is going to be a video on this gigantic Polish body armour. So this is some very interesting stuff, it's another thing B-Store sent to me. So as usual there'll be an eBay link down below in the description to his page. So this is pretty fascinating stuff. So obviously there's lots of different types of body armours available. I've done videos on various body armours before, but this is probably the heaviest sort of most protective thing I've got. Now, right behind me conveniently is the British Mark IV Osprey, which was the body armour I was sort of getting around to setting up as like heavy military standard stuff, but, um, you know, I never finished it. But now there's this. So, it's in WZ-93 camo, I think it's called, and it's in nice non-faded condition. Now, I think Beast or Pietro, I think he sells these depending on the condition they're in at different price points. So I assume if you're buying it with just the liner, as in, like, you know, the outer camo cover, Here's another one, like the desert style one they do. Um, I think when you, he sells it like that, they're like 40 odd quid. I think if you're buying it with all the armour plates in it, it's a couple of hundred. So bear that in mind. So, you know, depending on what price point you're looking at, this may or may not be suitable. But... Right, let's get open. So it's a giant bit of armour, and I will show you the Kevlar filler and everything in a bit. But what I'm going to do first is um, just get it all done up and put it on. So how this armour works, lots of Kevlar filler in it, and um, armoured plates. A front and a back, big metal armoured disc, sort of, you know, flat panel. So, let me try and remember how I put this on initially yesterday, because, again, it's one of those armours. I think I'm going to have to probably undo this strap here. Then I'm sure the collar comes up here. That's it. Right. Now, if I get my right arm through there, there we go. Then what I can do is get this other side pulled across. So this is the neck bit. Because what you'll notice with this, it's the stuff that's got all the neck protection and everything. It's not, you know, one of those armours like the UCBA, which has a little plate covering your vitals and then that's it. This is, you know, one of those real deal style military armours. So the only difficult bit with this, obviously, is if you're on your own trying to get the Velcros all done up. Because, you know, there we are. So, I could probably do it tighter if I had somebody else helping me. So, here is the armour. So, as you can see, pretty hefty stuff. I've not weighed this, but I imagine it's about 20 odd kilos. It is pretty heavy. Um, but it's actually fairly comfortable. Like with a lot of these armours, if the weight is distributed well, you will not feel it too much. You'll obviously feel it if you're trying to run around and exercise in it or whatever. But in terms of, um, you know, is it uncomfortable just to wear? No. So. There's also an additional bit to the armour that I'll put on now if I can manage it. Um, and that is the groin protector. So this has one of those, you know, bits that just hangs off the front there to stop your nuts getting blown off, which is obviously a good feature. So I'll just show you what the Kevlar filler looks like in this, because this bit's actually easier to get out. So, similar to the British Osprey kind of stuff, there's that very similar kind of Kevlar in a little liner here. So that's what it says on that side. And here is the label. So I don't know if that tells you much on here. And again, I don't read Polish, but I don't know if that's saying, you know, the armor ratings. I would assume with the thickness of it, assuming it's made to the same standard as a lot of Western stuff, this would probably be sort of level 3A or level 2 sort of rated Kevlar, which is pretty standard for all these vests. Um, so what I will do now is put that back in there. I don't know if there's a this side towards body, probably not on one of these kind of things because it's pretty much just an identical panel. So let's put that in there. And I'm really hoping I never need one of these, you know, to prevent my dick getting blown off, but you never know. So let's pop that back in there. And then Velcro that back up. So this attaches two ways to the uh, body armour. It's got a Velcro strip and it's got a zip. So, whether or not I can feel where the zip is on here, um, to actually put it on, the zip line's obviously there, so that would be the end of the zip there. But obviously these things are generally much easier to put on if you've got the armour off or you've got something else helping you do it. But Oh, there we go, I think that's on. Oh yeah, there we go. So, and now I can Velcro it on. So yeah, the groin protector is now on there as well, as you can see. Flaps up and down. Um, so yeah, so on the front you've got a load of different sort of bits for it. 
like you know pockets mag things and all that but obviously what people are probably going to be most interested in this is the plate so let's get one of those out there we go so these are pretty hefty so as you can see I assume that's a big bit of steel or titanium similar to the AR500 plates whatever you call them so that's definitely going to protect all your vital organs because it's fairly big it's got foam on the back and I guess the entire point of the foam on the back is to soften the impact when it hits you. Now, different people have said these give you div different levels of protection. I've not got firearms to test them. But I would assume this would definitely stop something like 5.56 and, you know, 5.45 rifle rounds when combined with the actual Kevlar behind it. Whether or not it stops M62 NATO or whatever, I don't know. But it certainly looks fairly hefty. Now, Piotr said he'd actually quite like me to test these if I could. Now, obviously, I'm not going to be able to get easily access to firearms. And I don't know how the UK government would feel about me shooting body armour, because they probably think it's some sort of terrorist training thing. However, um, I'd be very happy to hit this with crossbows and melee weapons and whatever to see what protection it offers. The plate sits sort of from here to here, if you're wondering, on the actual body armour. So yeah, that would definitely protect all your vitals. Obviously, you'd adjust the vest and everything so all the stuff is pulled up exactly where it needs to sit on you. There's also another one of those panels there on the back. So, as said, this vest is completely filled with Kevlar. You've got the shoulder protection there. You know, you've got... Obviously, it doesn't completely protect your armpits, but that's the same as of the Osprey vests. Um, but, you know, it comes up to here on you, so that's pretty good. And, you know, like I said, Kevlar all around plus the panels. So this would be very good body armour. As I said, what the actual ballistic ratings of both the Kevlar filler and the metal plates are exactly, I don't know. But I don't think they'd be too different from a lot of Western stuff. So the interesting thing is it's got the WZ-93 camo pattern on it. and Or the Pantera one or Puma or whatever it's called. And as far as I'm aware... It wasn't actually too um, sort of um, late on that the Poles were um, sort of developing this into the 90s, which makes me think that you know they were probably quite far ahead of Britain in front of you know armor development. Now, obviously, not in front of the US because the US has loads of money to spend on military stuff. But in terms of British stuff, this uh, something like the Mark IV Osprey there that didn't go into service until sort of probably 2010 or after. Um, as far as I'm aware, Britain only had things like the combat body armour in the 90s, which had no plates on or whatever. So, for, um, you know, a nation developing its military economy and everything and trying to become more independent, Poland's certainly doing a good job of a lot of this gear. That's what I always find quite funny, to be honest, when you compare the state Poland's military is in compared to Britain's, and you go, oh, oh dear, we're in a bit of trouble, aren't we here? Not that I'd ever worry about Polish invasion of the UK, but it does give you some idea of, you know, how times are changing with a lot of nations around the world in terms of their military sort of power. So yeah, this is pretty good stuff. I don't know what else to say about it in this video. As you can see, I can do stuff like this easy enough. You do feel that slightly on your um, knees doing that, but, you know, in terms of bracing a rifle against it, I don't know how well that would work. Um, it looks like it's flat enough there and there that you could probably do it without too much trouble. Um, but as I said, there's lots of different pouches and that on here. So, at a later point, what I'll try and do is hopefully do a video where I test this, um, you know, with crossbows and melee weapons and things like that. Because I imagine this would actually be quite good if somebody was hitting you with the plates in there and, you know, the Kevlar absorbing a lot of the shock. Um, so, yeah, there's not too much else I've really got to say about this at this point. Um, but again, I'll definitely try and do some more videos on this because it's pretty interesting. Um, so yeah, in terms of comfort, it's not bad at all. You do feel it on your shoulders and knees a bit, but that's what you'd expect from any heavy body armour. But again, as we've said in a lot of videos, the problem with body armour is you always have to make a compromise. If you're, um, you know, if you've got lightweight armour like the ECBA, everybody will complain it doesn't cover enough of your organs, you know, it doesn't cover your neck and everything like that. Oh, I forgot to say with this neck bit, you can actually put that across as well, if I find a bit of Velcro it attaches to. Is it there? There we go, so that gives you better neck protection there from shrapnel, which is obviously what you want with the Kevlar thing, stopping your neck getting lacerated. Um, but yeah, there's always a compromise of armour. You can either have the very lightweight armour, which people complain doesn't cover enough of your body, but again, that means you can move around in it easier. And you'll have stuff like this, which is very heavy armour, in the sense of, you know, the weights that infantry armour generally goes to. But at least in this regard, although it's heavy and a bit cumbersome, you are very well protected. 
So again, there's always a trade-off. You're probably going to have to look at what armour is best for you if you're getting armour. Because, again, not everybody's going to want the same armour. If I personally wanted any armour for anything, I'd probably want something like the ECBA. Just because Kevlar filler, you know, with a small trauma plate on the front and back is probably good enough for me. But again, if I was somewhere where I'd expect a lot more frets, you'd want something a bit more serious like this. Um, so yeah, overall, pretty adjustable and good. One negative of it, which isn't too bad if you want armour like this, this stuff can't really be detached from it. You can take all the little bits off so it's not so sort of pulled tight, all the, you know, collar and shoulder protectors and all those. Um, but this always stays on there. I mean, you could take the Kevlar filler out, I suppose. Or if you bought the liner and were doing it yourself for how much armour you wanted in there. You don't have to put armour in these bits, so if you do that, it's just like, you know, a bit of fabric, so it has no weight to it at all. But obviously with armour like this, I'd always recommend the front and back Kevlar panel and the plates, preferably, because that's the main, you know, body protection. But, obviously, the neck and shoulder armour does protect you from shrapnel as well. That's kind of the point of it. Because if you remember, originally, infantry body armour and helmets were only designed to stop shrapnel, not bullets. It was only later on that people started adding steel plates with extra shrapnel protection and ballistic protection. But the good thing about the steel plates in this, I imagine they can get shot multiple times before they kind of give up. Um, with ceramic plates, although they tend to be slightly better at stopping rifle rounds, the issue they have is they tend to shatter after one or two hits, which again, you know, it's really hard to say, isn't it, if you were being shot at, how much would you survive anyway? But, you know, I suppose having metal plates is a plus in that regard, but, you know, they are going to survive multiple hits before they give in, and yet you might even be able to weld and repair them. So, there you go. As I said, there will be a link down below to these. A big thank you to Piotr again for sending me them. You know, they're really cool things. Um, how much use I can get out of this at the moment, I don't know, but, you know, it's cool for what it is, um, you know, and as said, it's certainly an option. I think he was saying that these are quite popular for people to buy in the US, probably because, you know, there's a lot more of a gun culture there and um, people wanting armour. Yeah, so, again, Polish military armour, not sure of the exact name of this. I think there's a vehicle crewman's version and an infantry version, I'm not sure which one this is, but yeah. It's all pretty good stuff, and yeah, again, it will depend on what grade of condition of it you buy, I guess, but... And as I said, if you wanted to, you could swap it out for the desert-style liner. It's a bit like a multicam thing, you know, that's got green and yellow in it. Um, or you could buy a liner and fill it with whatever you wanted to fill it yourself. If you just wanted something like this for airsoft, obviously, I just recommend buying the liner only, and then putting anything in it as and when you want it, but yeah, it's pretty impressive, good stuff. Um, and then, yeah, hopefully a bit further down the line there might be a video of me putting this on Zomba or Weapon Collector or something and testing it that way. The only problem with testing it is I always hate damaging the liners these I'm in, but I'm sure we can rig something up. But, yeah, there we go. Um, you know, hopefully you've enjoyed this video. This is pretty fascinating stuff. Um, and, yeah, if this is the sort of thing that interests you, there'll be a link below, but, yeah, I imagine it would give you very good protection, because I said it's thick enough Kevlar in here. And you've got the steel plates front and back, so yeah, it's going to give you pretty good coverage against um, quite a lot of frets.